I have a prediction for the future of DAWs. I think that they're going to start implementing spectral tools directly into the channel strips because it is just too much of an ear candy to not do it. And there are so many things you can do to mess with the spectral side of things that it's a no-brainer to start utilizing direct technologies into those tracks. Maybe those technologies communicate with the various layers and tracks within the project so that it gets even crazier and crazier. Because I was just thinking about AI and how that's going to you know, create new kinds of music, but even before that, that's I've been focused on the before factor for a long time about AI because everybody's just ready to jump into AI, but there's so much uh, untapped stuff that never got fully developed before AI, and I really wonder what's going to happen with that because we have an issue in society where people move forward too quickly too often, and that's a thing of structure and control and power and how monopolies basically move that stuff and but people say they look back and they say we like some things from the past so anyway so that's this is a case where a real musician is keeping an ear on everything because i have the all hearing ear as my logo and um so but spectral stuff it actually also feeds ai <clears throat> but anyways listening to it from the human perspective you can hear how if what if you had you know 10 different spectral editing um tools and plugins right on your track okay so those are going to be communicating to other channels on your on your mixer and doing crazy stuff how could you resist you know being able to do this so what it is right now you could probably get away with doing some things like that uh, with uh, just a, doing it the old-fashioned way you know, like splitting the stems up and messing with the the spectral structure and then kind of bringing it into the arrangement and you know messing with the remixes of it and such and such but what I'm talking about is a little more sophisticated direct implementation of the technology so that when you are in a program like Logic um, not only could you should you you'd be able to push a button and split things up like the stems and all this but you should also have a manipulation factor with the stems so that you can tweak those and create cool morphing effects just right from the go. Just think about uh, an axis, an XY axis that is a vector and you're just moving along through the spectral system with this axis on each channel. Oh my God, oh my God, that is irresistible from a sound design point of view and to think about how many kinds of people that would affect in terms of their professions, you know, from um, movie editors to, you know, musicians to hobbyists to, you know, all these professionals out there. So, you know, if you have this right readily accessible within the DAW, it makes it much easier uh, and more efficient to get in there and be able to simply tweak things. So it's just a thought and maybe a feature request that spectral editing tools and manipulation systems be implemented directly into DAWs. It's almost like MIDI effects. MIDI effects are almost cheating in terms of composition, but it's how to use them creatively. Because once you have this layer that can can create music, you still have to take the human element to really make it worth the while and make it real music and make the bring out the musicality in the technology. So that's what I think about AI too. But in this video, it's just about how spectral tools could be implemented on a channel-based layer within the DAW. This is for you, Logic and Cubase and Albedon and all the others. So, we'll see.